before we leave our discussion of open access, I wanted to point out one more thing, which is how much uh, phishing effort occurs in open access. The open access level of effort corresponds to quite a bit of phishing effort. And that means that you're pretty far to the right in this graph. Now how about the graph on the bottom? In the graph on the bottom, a lot of fishing effort, look where the higher fishing effort is. The higher fishing effort is on the left. So the open access point is going to be some point like this. Actually, let me draw that in a different pen. The open access point is going to be someplace with a small population size. So remember that this is population size here. With a small population size because it's a large level of effort. So that's where that that's where that's that's where open access brings you. Now one traditional way of managing a fishery, so not allowing it to be open access is to manage it for maximum sustainable yield. Maximum sustainable yield we saw is over here in this diagram. When fisheries are managed by biologists, not economists, they're often managed for maximum sustainable yield because that kind of makes sense. You want the biggest sustainable yield possible. So biologists want sustainability, so you want a sustainable yield, but they want the biggest, the biggest amount of yield that's better for the industry, so it's maximum sustainable yield. So we saw where maximum sustainable yield is in the in the bottom uh, graph. In the upper left, maximum sustainable yield will be here. And in the upper right, uh, maximum sustainable yield is is here. Maximum sustainable yield effort. So I so you mentioned that already. And in the bottom graph a maximum sustainable yield is this level. So that's that's maximum sustainable yield. Now what happens if so we talked about open access, we talked about maximum sustainable yield. Now what happens if you have completely the opposite of open access, which is private property. So that's this term here, private property. So the fish now have owners. You can think about a company owning a certain part of the ocean or owning certain fish regardless of where they are in the ocean. Uh, only this company can catch these fish. If anybody else catches the fish, it's theft, it's illegal, and uh, they can get arrested and go to jail. So, with a private property fishery, what happens? So, I'm going to draw the upper right hand graph again. Fishing effort. Dollars. Total revenue. And total cost. And we know that open access is about here. Maximum sustainable yield is about here. What a private property is, uh, industry is going to do is have firms that maximize profit. Now, of course, the open access firms maximize profit also. But it ends up that the only profit they can get in long run equilibrium is zero, because otherwise you have entry or exit of firms. But there's no entry or exit of firms if there's private property. No other firm can come and catch your fish. So you don't have to worry about entry or exit in private property. So in private property, you have profit maximization. That's not going to result in zero profit because you have property rights. Where, where is uh, private property uh, going to result? Well, what, what, what level of fishing effort? Well. You look at where you look at your total revenue, and you look at your total cost, and you think about the gap between total revenue and total cost, and you go to where that gap is maximized, and that's going to be um, it's going to be where t 
total revenue minus total cost, that is the gap is the biggest, that's also going to be where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. In other words, where the slope of the total revenue curve is going to equal the slope of the total cost curve. So if I, if I take the total cost curve and I move it up the parallel way until it's tangent to total revenue, I get something like something like that. And so this point here, where the slope of the total cost curve equals the slope of the total revenue curve. In other words, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, that's going to be the profit maximum. Uh, you, you should ignore this, this thing here. That, that about zero profit, because that was about open access equilibrium. That's what we did before. So the profit maximizing point in private property is here. I'll just call it PP for private property. And so the private uh, property equilibrium is characterized by a really nice amount of profit. There's the profit that the uh, private firms accrue because unlike an open access equilibrium, they don't have to worry about they, they have their own fish and they don't have to worry about anybody else catching quote unquote their fish. However, this is the maximum of short run profit, instantaneous profit. It turns out that a private property firm takes not only short run profit into account, but also long run profit into account. And that's what we're going to discuss in the next video.